that up this time. All right. Uh, morning, everyone. Can you just uh, write a message uh, on the chat just to uh, so I can make sure that you you're hearing me? Good morning, Ibrahim. Yeah. So everybody can hear me. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm sure a lot of you are um, are. are uh, very anxious to know your performance in the in the quizzes okay um for the faults for the faults errors and failures exercise the fault was that the indices in the for loop was uh, was flipped was ji instead of ij i hope you all got that right and then the other thing uh the other quiz was about the prime path the prime path analysis. Uh, what I've done, I put up on Moodle that exercise with a solution and a whole a whole little other questions about that particular graph. Okay. Now, like I said, yeah, you can go through it. Honestly, can't remember how many exact prime paths they exist, but but the uh, the solution is already up on Moodle. I posted up last night. You can uh, try out the exercise again. I suggest you do. And, you know, create whatever graph, you know, there's infinite questions that you can create for yourself. You know, one with a loop or something that you can practice on and you develop a rather quick eye. All right, because what I've saw in the quiz is that a lot of you seem to be a little bit too slow in, in solving that exercise. And that's problematic because the midterm period is just about the same time as the class period. So you're not going to be having that much time, that much more time. So you need to be able to exercise better. You need to be able to exercise better. Um, no, no, it's not, not the CFG folder, Sadun. Uh, it's called, um, it's called structural coverage exercises. I should have actually called it prime path exercises. Really, that's what I was, but because there's other questions other than prime path, but it's not the CFG folder. CFG folder is coming up today. Okay. Um, okay. So like I said, I'm, I just be sure to, uh, to, to do some of these exercises by hand first before you get to the exam so that when the exam actually starts, you know, you get to do it right away. I mean, you, you already know what the question is going to be. So there's no surprise there. It's just a case of getting your practice and getting your hand to be a little bit quicker in the exam, okay? All right, now in the, um, in the last few lectures, we were talking about structural coverage, but just with respect to the, the graph itself, okay? With complete irrespective of what's feasible and what's infeasible, okay? So we might end up in a situation where there is a path that I want to take. I want to be able to tour because one of my test requirements asking me to tour that sub path. However, uh, that path is infeasible because of, for example, an if statement that is just illogical. For example, uh, a, a, a branch in my if statement that says it can only be executed if and only if x is bigger than zero and smaller than zero at the same time. So good luck trying to find a test case that executes that branch. It's never going to happen, OK? Which kind of like gives rise to another type of structural coverage. It's one where we don't just consider the structure itself, but rather consider the usage of data, OK? The data flow. And when we say data flow, what happens in the life cycle of data is that data gets defined at some place and then it gets used. That's all that happens. Okay, data doesn't do anything else. Okay, if it's um, in a formula, that means it's being used. If you're assigning it to something, that means it's being used. Okay. Um, if it's in an if branch, 
being evaluated for a condition, that also means being used. All right. And so what we're looking for is that cycle from the point it got defined to the point it got used. These are the only ways that data is going to flow. We're making sure that those ways happen correctly. All right. So we're going to try to execute those possible ways, the places where it got defined and where we can tour until the place we use those variables. All right, and making sure that the software is operating properly. Okay, so that gives us more rise to something called a data flow. Data flow coverage. Okay, and the first couple of definitions, the first word is called definition. We're going to refer to it as def from that point on. And it's a location where a variable is defined. Okay, where we say, for example, int x equals five, line number one. That's the place where it got defined. Maybe in line number five, I would say x equals seven. That's another definition. All right. And then in line number 10, if I say y equals to x, I've used x. So that's a, a place I would note down as a use of the variable x. All right. Now, remember I was saying a moment ago, we're trying to connect those definitions to the uses and What's really important here, if you notice that if I have a line saying X equals five, okay, the very next line in my code saying X equals seven, well then when X was equal to five, it was absolutely useless for us. It never got used. So it never put, we were never put in a situation to judge whether the software will work properly had X was equal to five because it was X equals five in one line the very next line was x equals seven. Or maybe line number 10, it said x equals seven, but between line one and line seven, so line 10, still there was absolutely no uses of the variable x, which then it comes back, we say that when we said x equals five, it was completely meaningless for us, okay? We never actually did anything for it. The fact that x was equal to five in line number one would, itself never caused any faults, any errors, any failures, because it never got used. It's only when variables get used, where now we check is the software working correctly or not working correctly. But just the fact that you've declared a variable, I mean, imagine you have, you have a piece of code and all the code is just basically a whole bunch of variable definitions. It's not gonna do anything. And because it's not going to do anything, it cannot fail at anything. All right. Uh, so this is what we call data flow criteria. This is, remember that little diamond crisscross graph that we, we looked at at the beginning of the chapter, assuming we have those situation over here. So I would say for variable X, the definitions happen at node zero while the uses happen at node four and five. For variable Z, the definitions I would say happen at node four and five. Now, in, in node number six, for example, I could have ended up using variable Z, okay? But here's the important thing. I gotta note that for a particular use, the definition could have happened more in one place. So. In node number three, that could have been an if-else statement, all right? Either I have to go left or I go right, okay? Which means that when I get to use the variable Z in node number six, it could have been as defined as Z equals X multiplied by two or defined as Z equals X minus eight, okay? Again, I gotta check both of those scenarios, okay? Gotta check both of those scenarios which then gives us rise to a number of coverage criteria based on data flow coverage, okay? And this is where the concepts of DU pairs and DU paths come into play. Now, before we explain the coverage criteria, much like what we've done with node coverage and edge coverage and edge fair coverage all the way to prime path coverage, okay? We had to define some definitions there, we're gonna do the same thing over here. 
Now, the first thing we're going to define is something called the DU pair. The word DU means definition use, okay? And it's a path where you pair up for a particular variable, a place where it got defined, and at some point later on, it got used, all right? So if I have a situation as such, okay, this is node number one, followed by node number two, followed by three, followed by four, followed by five, okay? And I have x equals five over here, and then I have uh, z equals x over here. The du pair that I have for x is from two to four. Okay, meaning that the path two, three, four. Okay, pretty easy. We're starting off very simple so far, huh? So this is a definition, this is a use, and together those do a du pair. Okay, I'll say a du pair is basically two, four. That's a du pair. Okay, obviously right now I have just the one path, but it could have been more. Okay, I'm going to talk about this in a moment. I, it could have been something like this. Still, the du pair is the same. It's still two, four, right? But now it could have come through multiple du paths. Okay, where well, the first path is two, three, four. The second path is two, six, four. Okay, is this clear for everyone so far? Guys here, oh, all good. Guys at home. All right. Okay, good. Right. Next up, what we're gonna define is the concept of a deaf clear path. Now, the deaf clear path. That concept is specifically focusing on the idea that. If I have a definition and before it got used, it got redefining again, then the previous definition is completely meaningless for me. Okay. Which I was explaining a moment ago. So that gave rise to the concept of a deaf clear path. So if I have a situation like this, this is one, going to two, going to three, going to four. Okay, here's x equals five, here's x equals seven, and here's z equals x, all right? X, uh, um, x one to four, I should have actually done that. Okay, one to four is still considered a du pair. Okay, and obviously two to four is another du pair. Okay, so for x, the du pairs that I have is one to four, and then I got two to four. However, only two to four is considered a deaf clear path because for the first X, there was a redefinition from my path from one to four, it got redefined again. So at some point later on, we'll get to see that the one to four part in our coverage criteria, we're not gonna really care about it very much because absolutely useless, all right? So this is what we call a deaf clear path, all right? And then the, the regular definition of reach, okay? If there's a deaf clear path from a node i to j with respect to a particular variable, okay? Then the definition of v at the i reaches and uses the so basically anywhere I can reach from a particular definition. Now, what that means is, had I had a graph going like this, okay? And then at some point I have um, a node over here and at some point I have a node over there, okay? And then this is where I do a definition for X and this is where I do a definition for X again. And at some point, this is where I do um, a use for X and over here I do a use for x, however, the reach from one is just three. The reach of the definition that happened on one is three. So this is why we don't actually care about one to four because when it got defined at 
one, it's never going to be used at four. So we don't really care. All right. And again, thing, the same thing, the reach from two is only four. It's not going to reach three. And again, we, we say that because the, the, the pair between two and three is meaningless for us. We don't really care about it because the way it was defined in two, it's never going to be used in three. All right. Now, next up, okay, this is where it gets really tricky. It's the last one. Is the concept of a DU path. Now, a DU path is a simple path. Remember what simple means? Simple means I cannot see the same node twice unless it happens to be the first node and the last node. And this is something I saw a whole bunch of you were uh, tripping up in the quiz. I started to see test requirements that are something like, you know, one two, three, two, okay? That is definitely wrong. I don't even have to check it because that's not even a simple path to begin with as a prime path, okay? So a DU path is a simple path that is a depth clear with respect to a particular variable. Now, again, one thing I should have actually mentioned a little early on is that all this data flow coverage, we're not saying it from the perspective of the node and where do I get from a particular node? Kind of like what we were doing with node coverage and edge, we, were, we, we, we put our finger on a node and start to see how many edges can we go from that node. This time it's a little different. We don't really care about the nodes per se or the edges. What we care about is the variables and where they're defined. And so when I say I'm gonna do data flow coverage, I always say with respect to a particular variable. Okay, that variable could be X, that variable could be Y, that variable could be Z, and so on. Okay. So, assuming I have a situation as such, um, okay, very, very important. Pay attention with me on this one. Okay, this is a, a node where I do a definition of X. Okay, I go to, it goes to node two. Okay, then it goes to node three, and then up. It goes to node four and comes back down over here to two. Then it goes to pa, 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 uh, uh, so node, no, no, five. Node five. And in node five, I have a use of X. Okay. <clears throat> now, theoretically, I have two DU pairs. The first of which is one, two, Actually, I have many pairs, okay? One, two, five, one, two, three, four, then back again to two, five. But then again, because I have a loop, I keep going on forever and ever and ever, okay? And it's the same problem that we had with structural coverage and hence it gave rise to the need to have prime path analysis because it says, okay, this is how we're gonna deal with, with loops and at most we're gonna give it a one time, okay? So what we care about in DU path, when we define those paths, is that those, those paths have to be simple path, okay? So, let me just do this quickly. So this would be a DU path, one, two, five, because it's simple. And I said one, two, five, no nodes are repeating. However, this path over here, uh, let me choose a different color. This over here is not, oh, this over here is not a DU path because it says one, two, three, four, two, five. And again, the number two shows up twice. Okay. So I discard that as a DU, a DU path. Okay. If I had a situation here where I had a use, I don't know why it's freezing up like that. I had a use of X over there and number four. Then I could have had another DU path saying one, two, three, four. Okay. 
In other words, it would have been okay to enter the loop at this point. Okay, but don't exit the loop. All right? Is this clear for everyone? Okay. Right. Now that we've understood, and the other two things are just about um, the different DU path that I can reach from a node and what I can reach from an edge. Okay. Um, so I will give you an exercise saying what are the DU paths for a particular node, sorry, for a particular variable at a particular node. And then you can tell me, well, are the DU path that exists are one, two, five, and I got one, two, three, four, all right? This is what I have, okay? And along with it, now that I've understood the concepts of DU paths that need to be simple, all right? Um, and they need to be deaf clear, okay? I should have actually put a dozen line. So it's simple, but also deaf clear. Meaning, had I had, for example, another definition of X over here, then one, two, three, four is not a DU path. And it shouldn't be because whatever I defined, whatever I defined in one, it's, it itself is not gonna be used at four, okay? What I've used, defined in one, it could have been used at five, that's fine. What I've defined in three would also be used in four and would also be used in five. So if I say, what are the DU paths for all the variables where X was defined, not just from node one, you would have told me, uh, doctor, like we got one, two, five, we got, a three, four, and we got three, four, two, five. Okay, these are a different path. And again, you'll notice saying, well, like, you know, something interesting here in, in the node number three, it got defined in two places. That's fine. Okay, because it could have, when it was used in node four, this is a place where it could have failed. All right. And then when it got used in node number five, it's another place where it could have failed. But yes. Okay. Now that gives us rise to the concept of um, the actual coverage criteria that we're going to look at. And the first of which is called the deaf, uh, the, the all deafs criteria. Okay. Meaning that every deaf for a variable has to, you have to connect it to a use, not a deaf use, just a use. So a deaf at some point, a, to a use at some point, okay? It could have been more uses, fine. I just need the one, one of those uses, okay? Obviously, this is the weakest. This is the absolute weakest. The second one level is making sure that every deaf of a variable, we try to connect it to every place where it got used. And this is called the all uses coverage. But there's even one more level up, okay? And the one more level up is called the all DU path. And you say, how the heck is there one more level up? We already in the last coverage criteria, we said for every def, trying to find out every use. Well, sometimes you can reach a use through multiple paths, okay? So I'm gonna just gonna uh, pause here for a second. Let me go do the whiteboard first, and then I'll do the screen share because I keep forgetting this every time. Where is the... Oh, there you go. Okay. Now for a variable X, all right, I could have had a situation where um, I have the following definitions, okay, at one, two, three, okay, and then these are the following uses, all right, um, at four, five, and six, okay. 
all deaths. Okay, assuming I have I have this situation over here. Actually, let me let me let me let me do it a different way. Just just use what I'm gonna put one over here. Okay. And assuming it is connected as such. Okay. <clears throat> all deaths. When I ask you for the minimum set of test requirements, you could have just said, Allah, I want four. It was a place where it got used. So I got used at five and six, but I don't care. Okay, so all deaths is the yellow. Okay, now next level up, we said we have the all uses. And the all uses says for every variable, <clears throat> For every sorry um, definition, I have to make it reach every single variable. So I'm gonna include this one as well, which we had before. Then I'm gonna include the one five, because it's another place where it got used. Okay, and the last one, I go one six as such. I use the upper arc, not the lower one, and that's enough. Okay, because when I ask, I always ask for the minimum set of test requirements. All right. Don't give me more, because if you're giving me more, we're exceeding the set of test requirements that we want, okay? And we're just going to a higher level of coverage criteria, which is fine, but as long as I know what I'm doing. So you can say that all uses is the yellow in addition to the pink that we had, okay? Last one up, we have the all DU paths. Okay, let's use the color green for this one. Okay, so all DU paths, obviously we're gonna get the first one, okay? The second one, and the third one, I'm not just gonna be satisfied with the upper path only, but I'm gonna be, I'm gonna require the bottom path as well. And again, that means that all DU path is the green plus the yellows plus the pink, okay? And as such, this criteria subsumes this one, and this one subsumes that one, okay? In other words, um, okay, uh, I got my all defs subsumed its test requirements by my all uses, which is then subsumed by my all du paths, okay? Always remember this, this, this color coding thing that I have at the bottom over here, okay? One, the first one, I asked you, if I ask for all deaths coverage, pick one and one only. If you say one four and one five, I deduct marks, because that's more than the minimum, okay? When I say all uses, you give me three. Don't give me the four arcs, okay? Give me three. And obviously, when I say three, I mean one of the two bottom arcs that is going from one to six. And finally, when I say all do you path, then you give me all of them. Now, you realize when you're actually solving this exercise, that's funny, is that it's easier to do the all do you path. Okay. And it's actually, it's trickier to keep reminding yourself when you're doing the all defs and the all uses that I need to do less. That from say this path and this path and this path, I need to choose just the one of them, not to just list them all, okay? Because again, like I said, all right, and I'm gonna warn you about this. If you put more than what is required, then that counts as a deduction because we end up doing higher coverage, which maybe costs more money, okay? Just gotta know what you're doing. Type. Um, can you open up your Moodles, please, everybody? Actually, actually, you know what? You don't have to. I'll just, you can just see it on the screen over here. Okay. 
But what I need you to do, you need, I need you to be able to write, okay? All right, so for this exercise, which was the midterm question at one point, okay? You guys should get retired now. Um, I need you to tell me what are, what's going on over here? Let's make sure I share the screen. Is it this one? Yeah, this one. Okay, guys at home, you, you probably don't even need to uh, you open up your Moodles anymore. Um, I apologize. Now, um, here's an exercise. I, it might be a little bit squished, guys, but I think you can see it enough. Or you can just open up on your own Moodles if you, if you can't really see it. Okay. Uh, what we want to do, we want to list the DU paths. All DU paths for an all DU path coverage criteria. So tell me the, the test requirements, okay, for all DU path coverage. Okay, I'll leave you a moment to think about it. First thing you're gonna wanna do is, you're gonna need to list down where the definitions happened and where the uses happened. This is kind of like step number one, okay? So put on the left-hand side the definitions, put on the right-hand side the uses, and try to see which one can connect to it, to which one to begin with, okay? Very important. the entire path because it could make a difference right because you can have the situation like this yeah okay one two three four is one thing one five four is a different thing so you gotta let me know which one you're choosing huh if you just go one four then i'm not really sure what you're talking about okay i know you're thinking about the shorthand that i was using at the beginning but that just to as a shortcut while i was explaining but when you answer, you have to write down the whole path. Yes. All right. The second reminder that I'm going to give you as you're doing this exercise is that a DU path needs to be two things. Simple and deaf clear. You finish it? How many do you have? Still out here, see what happens. 
Quer dizer, se for mesmo, se põe um vídeo de dança. A little dizzy now. Small grab, but it's dizzy. Hello, <laughs> guys at home. How many do you have? How many do you pass? Sadun, Ibrahim, yeah, oh, we got one, so what do we have, oh, not done yet, okay. Banan, Abdurrahman, I'm still working on it. Six? Sticking with the story, Ani? Okay. Faye, Treya. Bad. How many do you pass so far? Six, okay, so you like banan. I'll wait a minute before I give you the answer. Fad, Budreya, Sadun. Six still trying. Yeah. Yeah. Eh? When it has no The best thing is there's no feelings for exercise in there. It's a definitive exercise. Mania, okay, so Abdurrahman got the mania. Rahim, did you find it out?
Six. All right. So, Banan, you first you said six. What are the six? Okay. So, what? Uh, I'm not sure I did that. Got one, two, three. One, two. Uh, I was just gonna. <laughs> one, two, three, five. One, two, three, five. One, two, six. Four, five. Four, five, two, oh, two, three. No, I did this all wrong. So four, five, two, three, sir. And then last one. Four, five, two, six. Okay, Abdurrahman, you said you have eight. What is it? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. All right. What is the issue with one, two, three, four, five? It's not deaf clear. The definition happened here and it got overridden in this one. So this is why type. Abdurrahman, tell me. What is wrong with um, one, two, three, five, two, six? It's not a simple path, okay? Which means we went into a loop. If you actually look at it visually, it means we actually went into a loop and we come out of the loop when that's not good, okay? It's okay to enter a loop. But not come out of it, okay? That's to be a simple. Fine. Um, assuming we have this, yeah. Can you redo the exercise, or my, or, or should I say, can you just tell me? This is the number seven. Tell me how many additional do you pass would exist, if any? That's the number seven. Hmm? No. Eh? Four, five. Seven, eh? Uh, four, four, five, seven, two, three, yes. And? Okay, and four, five, seven. I had a sotic tenebra now. Four, five, huh? Two, six. All right. And again, had we actually not had those, this node number seven, then the old use would have been actually the same thing as the old DU path because we didn't actually have multiple paths for the same thing. The reason I put the number seven is it actually shows like, um, Here's now the trick questions, okay? For this graph with node number seven, these are the actual DU paths that we've created, okay? Now tell me, which ones should we cross out? Had we been doing just the all uses coverage? I told you, tell me the minimum test requirements 
set of test requirements for all uses coverage. That should be easy for two reasons. First reason is because I just already gave you the answer. Guys at home, which ones should I cross out had I just wanted all uses coverage? The what, huh? The ones with the seven? The graph with the seven? What do you mean the graph with the seven? Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, the answer, the question that I'm asking is with the node number seven. My side is open. Cross out the extra one. The, the, I mean the cross the, the last two. Okay, so that's right. We're gonna cross the last two. Hey, because I just gave you an answer a moment ago. But really, um, the best way to do it visually, okay, you'll notice that when I'm looking at those two, and I'm looking at those two, once I see two paths starting with the same number and ending with the same last number, then I know I've got multiple paths. And that's not good for all uses. I just need to pick one, okay? It doesn't matter which one. I just need to pick one, okay? So this one starts with four, other one starts with four, and starts with, ends with three, and other ones ends with three. So I know it's multiple paths between the same defuse pair. Okay, so I cross out one of them. Or even if it's multiple, I cross out all of them and I just leave one of them. And again, the same thing for D6 and what would have been D8. Okay, I'm beginning with four and I'm ending with six, meaning that it's just multiple paths from the same DU pair. So I need to cross one of them. Doesn't matter which one of them, as long as you cross out one of them, it's fine. Okay, so all uses would have actually required me to delete those last two DU path that I've created when I added the node number seven. All right, now next up is from the six that I'm left with, which ones, um, which ones, uh, what was I gonna say? Would I cross out if I wanted the minimum set of test requirements to cover all DEFs coverage, to satisfy all DEFs coverage? Okay, say what? D1 and D4. Tell me, tell me which ones you have to cross out. D2, D3. D2, D3. D5, D5 and D6, okay? That's right. Now, the easy way to do it is pick up ones that start with the same number. So those are starting with the same number. And if starting with the same number, well, we're talking about the same node. And so all of them are gonna reach somehow some sort of a use. I don't care which one it got used, I just need one. So Abdurrahman chose two, three to cross out and then five and six to cross out. So yeah, that would have been just fine, okay? Let me, um, I don't know how to erase this. It used to be simpler than this. I don't know why. I don't know why they did this. Okay. No, that's not what I had. Oh, yeah, yeah. The the uh, the controls are at the top. Okay, okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, there we go. Aha! Uh -huh, this is where it is. Okay. Okay, so we're starting off again. Um, I want you to do the same exercise again. However, this time, assuming this def was erased. And that's the last thing I'm gonna do today and then after that you can go home.
You're thinking? Okay, so how many? Four. You guys at home? How many do you have? Are you still working on it? No response. Guys at home, Fad, Rahim, Faye, still working on it? Sadun. Okay, so Faye, what are the four? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, five. One, two, six. One, two, three. Okay. Is that right? So, what do you have to? Okay. Five. So, we got D1, D2, D3, D4. And lastly, if I asked. For all uses, coverage only, which one should I cross out, DFA? Just write, tell me the D numbers. For all uses, which ones should I cross out? Okay, so it's easy, okay, Fay. So we pick up us in the first two over here. I noticed that both of them start with the same number and end with the same number, meaning there are two different paths going from one to five, okay? And all uses says, give me one path from a definition to a use, okay? Just the one, if there's multiple, I don't care. Just give me one and cross out the rest. So I could have very simply just crossed D2 for all uses coverage. Okay, and then finally, for all deaths coverage, what sh should I, which one should I, yeah, but just tell me something to, to cross out. D, yeah? D3 and D1. And again, the way I'm looking at it is that I notice that all of these are starting with the same number, which means that from all those that I, I have the same number, I just really care about picking one and one only, okay? And erasing the rest, all right? So that's it for today. Um, I just wanna I tell you something before I, I stop. Where is it?